Well, damn it all to hell, I wanted to do a diatribe about the Pope visiting America this week, but I just can't find a lick of coverage about it in the media. Yeah? Keep doing searches for anti-gay, anti-trans, anti-abortion, anti-gender equality, anti-birth control, pro-exorcism, head of worldwide child rape cabal visits U.S., and I, I can't find a thing. And then, you know, I started figuring, well, maybe it's just that the liberal sites aren't covering it. You know, they don't usually buy into the religious shit as much as the right-wing sites. So I started Googling pro-global warming, anti-gun, anti-death penalty, pro-immigration, anti-capitalist head of worldwide child rape cabal visits U.S., and still nothing. Now, eventually I figured out what the problem was. Apparently some moral icon that's a paragon of humanitarian virtue was also visiting the U.S. at the same time, and I guess he's also named Francis? So that's probably why the media was ignoring the Pope. I mean, that must be what happened, because the only other alternative is that media groups left, right, and center collectively decided to completely ignore all the heinous, malevolent shit the Catholic Church actually does under this Pope's leadership, and instead focus on a bunch of empty platitudes that in no way match the actual actions of said leadership. You know, meanwhile, Sepp Blatter's over somewhere saying, hey guys, I also believe in global warming. Am I forgiven now? I mean, you know, when I looked the other way, it didn't result in kids getting fucked over and over again. And Josh Duggar's saying, well, yeah, I mean, some kids got fucked over and over again, but I never actively campaigned to condemn any, you know, entire continents to a continued AIDS epidemic. Can I be forgiven too? You know, the a asshole hedge fund guy with the toxoplasmosis pill is saying, you know, I touched a deformed guy once, hugged him and everything, and I've never encouraged any mentally ill people to seek out witch doctors instead of psychiatrists. And the dentist that shot that line is saying, well, I also don't think that people should starve to death. Plus, I haven't personally funded any national anti-gay marriage referendums in the Balkans. Yet somehow this asshole drops in, he tosses out some of the most banal platitudes you can imagine, and all is forgiven. The U.S. media becomes a fucking special ed teacher, praising him for thinking humans should live, and refugees should have homes, and hungry people should have food, and political parties should just work together. He has the exact same talking points as a fourth grader in a beauty pageant, and yet even the progressive media is patting him on the back for using the potty like a big boy. How about one fucking reporter says, Excuse me, your popiness... But recent reports strongly suggest you guys are still transferring child rapists to third world countries and then shielding them from prosecution. Um, is there a more evil thing that an institution can do, or is that the most evil thing? And look, I, you, you know, I understand the concept of the bar being lowered here. You know, the last pope couldn't go three days without condemning the Armenians or something. It's, so this is you know, kind of like when Obama got the Nobel Peace Prize for not being George W. Bush. It's not unprecedented... But still, at a certain point, the honeymoon is supposed to end, right? At a certain point, we're supposed to look at what the Pope's actually done about child rape and mob money laundering and equality within the church, see that it's nothing, and then stop licking his balls over choosing to have lunch with homeless people rather than congressmen. I mean, who the fuck would rather eat with congressmen than homeless people? At least none of the homeless people stole his glass. But consider this. The Pope has absolutely no ability to make a real difference in things like climate change, world hunger, and the Syrian refugee crisis. I mean, you know, okay, maybe a little difference. He can rally a few hearts to the cause or whatever, but when it comes down to it, the effect he can have on it is about the same as the effect that Angelina Jolie could have. But unlike Angelina, he has full autonomy to fix the problems in his own fucking church, and he's done nothing of substance, nothing on the child rape pandemic, the money laundering shit, the misogyny, the homophobia. The actual thing he's in charge of is a den of the worst kind of criminality imaginable. I mean, sure, they stopped torturing people to death a few centuries ago, and they stopped hiding Nazis once they ran out of Nazis that needed hiding. So this is probably the least immoral the Vatican has ever been, but that's a pretty easy bar to slither over. Meanwhile, the, the, the asshole who won't even turn child rapists over to the police is going to come lecture the U.S. Congress on how to govern? Dude, fuck you. Your country is 1 230th the size of Disney World, and everyone has the same religion. What the fuck do you know about governance? Our Congress is dysfunctional, sure, but at least we arrest people who fuck children. So what we have here is yet another way that religion gets in the way of an honest national dialogue. If the Pope was a leader of a, like a real country... A real country that, you know, didn't allow women to govern, opposed the rights of gays, demonized birth control, laundered money for mobsters, and kept sending out ambassadors that fucked kids and then holding them back and refusing to extradite them. No one in this country would give the slightest pity fuck about his views on climate change.
This man is at the head of one of the most morally reprehensible international institutions in the world and has done nothing substantive to change that fact. You know what? He's impaneled people to offer recommendations to form committees to advise encyclicals and shit. But as the Joseph Wesolowski case proved, even now their current policy on kid fuckers is to sneak them out of the countries they're accused of fucking kids in under the cover of darkness and then protect them from punishment until they die. That is their current active policy. And yet this motherfucker is trying to tell the rest of the world how to be ethical. But of course, the national media isn't even paying lip service to this hypocrisy because Jesus. You know, they must figure that these poor Catholics have had so much bad press and now it's their responsibility to balance that out with positive coverage instead of dwelling on the present. But you take away the fact that they, you know, have to kiss religion's ass and stuff and you realize that they're praising Nambla for the great job they're doing with the highway they adopted. It's like the media praising a company's environmental record based on nothing but the fact that they changed their logo to a green one. If you thought the Vatican was a corrupt institution in the 90s, you have no reason to think any differently now. They haven't changed anything but the mascot.